Now that we've established what sex chromosomes are and how they play their role in non-Mendelian genetics, we're going to continue speaking about chromosomes, but this time we're going to mention a new term. And this new term is the idea of linkage. And this next flowchart will be entitled Linked Genes 1. So let's write this down. Linked Genes and Roman numeral 1. So, one thing we want to establish first in terms of linked genes is the idea of the human genome. Just some background establishment so that we have a good groundwork as we move forward in this lecture. The human genome is defined as the entire genetic makeup of humans. There's about 20,000 genes, so I'll write 20k genes within the human genome. There are 23 pairs of chromosomes within this human genome. But what's interesting, and this is where the idea of linkage comes in, we can also state this fact. Some genes, let's write that down, some genes are, and we can put this in quotes for right now, since we don't really know what this means, linked. Some genes are linked on same chromosome. Because look, think about it like this. We have 20,000 different genes, but only 23 pairs of chromosomes to put them onto um, these, all these genes, to put all these genes onto. So how can we possibly do that? We have to conserve somehow. And what happens is this. Some genes are going to be linked on the same chromosome. Let's talk about linkage, the actual term, a little bit further now that we understand the role of the human genome and what linked genes sort of are. I want to move a little forward and sort of define the idea of linkage more specifically. So let's write that down. Linkage. Now, linkage is going to be defined as, and this is a bit of a wordy definition, but let's get through it together. The tendency for, let's write this down, tendency for groups of genes. So for groups of genes on same chromosome, there's that keyword, on same, let's underline same chromosome, I'll just write chromo, on same chromosome to be inherited together. That's a key phrase there, so we're going to write inherited and then together and underline both of those words. That's the key here. The key idea of linkage is that we have the same gene, the genes on the same chromosome being inherited together usually most of the time. This is a tendency, okay? That's a key phrase here. Oops, let me just do that again. It's a tendency, meaning that it happens sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it happens more so than others. So we're going to figure out what this tendency really, really relates to as we move forward in this discussion on linked genes. So let's keep this definition in the back of our heads as we continue. Furthermore, what I can say about linkage is that whenever we inherit chromosomes, let's write this down, chromosomes are inherited as a unit. So we'll write chromos inherited as a unit. Because remember, this is the unit of heredity, the thing that gets passed on to the next generation. And this is how chromosomes are inherited, as single, or at least we think, singular units. What usually happens because of this inheritance pattern is that we're going to have these chromosomes pair and separate during a very important process. You should remember what that um, process is. We'll write this down. Pair and separate during what process? The pairing and separating right, up, right upon that process is during meiosis. Let's write that down. So this is all facts that we've established before. I still haven't gotten to linkage yet. So chromosomes are inherited as a unit, and if I want to inherit them, I have to pair and separate them during meiosis. But what about linked genes specifically? So linked genes are interesting because these are the genes through this process, so we'll underline linked genes, these are the genes through this process that travel together. They always travel together. Travel together within the unit. Let's say within unit. This is what linkage is all about. Genes traveling together. Now, this should be sparking something within you. We've established before Mendel's laws, right? Remember the law of independent assortment? That law basically stated in regards to this final point, which we can write over here, that the alleles are actually not acting independently. Alleles are not, absolutely not, acting as independently as Mendel thought they would be, as Mendel said that they should. 
we thought that A and B always acted absolutely independently from each other. But what we're going to start to notice in linked genes and in linkages specifically is that sometimes A and B actually do like to travel together and don't act completely independently. For this reason, and this is why I like to also consider this lecture not even just called chromosomes, but non-Mendelian genetics. This is something, linkage, this whole idea is something that violates M's of course, it's referring to Mendel, his second law. And that second law is that law of IA, independent assortment. How can things independently assort if there's a tendency for some to be grouped with others more so than others? Some alleles don't act independently compared to other alleles. Sometimes allele A will combine with allele B and travel together. This is what we mean by linkage. I think this is going to make a lot more sense when we go through a comparison of linked versus unlinked genes. And we're actually going to be doing that in the next video so that we can uh, conserve our time.